Namaste, Hamastu, Hatip, Hotip, Ashe, Shalom, Salam, and all the other many ways there are to say the word peace. Begin all thoughts and all actions by using the all. First in all, all praise is due to the Most High God. No individual should ever undergo any great or important undertaking without first evoking, invoking, or provoking the blessing from their own supreme being. With that being said, welcome back everyone to an introduction into studying with the Trayful Social Club. Everyone knows that we start off with a little music, so let's get to it, okay? everybody welcome back so <clears throat> everyone knows that we don't have any set topics we just get right straight into it with so let's get right into it the first thing that comes to mind today is the crusades before we look up the word I mean, before we look up the actual crusades, let's look up the word crusade and what it means and the etymology of this word. Late 16th century, originally crusade from French crusade, an alteration influenced by Spanish crusado of earlier croisi, literally the state of being marked with the cross. Based on the Latin crux or cro, cross in the 17th century from cruzado, from Spanish cruzado, was introduced. The blending of these two forms led to the current spelling first recorded in the early 18th century. So what the word crusade means is to be marked with a cross. So anybody who ever tattooed a cross on themselves, that's called a crusade. Medieval military expedition, one of a series made by Europeans to recover the Holy Land from the Muslims in the 11th, 12th, and 13th centuries. A war instigated by the church for alleged religious ends. An organized campaign concerning a political, social, or religious issue typically motivated by a fervent desire for change. So now let's look up the Crusades. What do we have here? The Crusades were a series of religious wars initiated, supported, and sometimes directed by the Latin Church in the medieval period, especially the campaigns between 1096 and 1271 in the Eastern Mediterranean aimed at recovering the Holy Land from the Islamic rule. The term Crusades has also been applied to other church-sanctioned campaigns fought to combat paganism and heresy 
or to resolve conflict among rival Roman Catholic groups or to gain political or territorial advantage. Crusades differed from other religious conflicts in that participants considered them in a penitential exercise that brought absolution. Historians contest the definition of the term crusade with some restricting it to armed pilgrimages to Jerusalem. Others including all Catholic military campaigns with a promise of spiritual benefits, all Catholic holy wars, or those with characteristic religious fervor. In 1095, Pope Urban II pro proclaimed the first crusade at the Council of Clermont. He encouraged military support for the Byzantine Emperor Alexius I against Seljuk Turks in an armed pilgrimage to Jerusalem. There was an enthusiastic response in Western Europe across all social strata. Historians debate the combination of motivations of the volunteers who took a public vow to join the crusade, the prospect of mass ascension into heaven at Jerusalem, satisfying feudal obligations, opportunities for renown, economic and political advantage are all considered. Four crusader states were established in the Near East, the county of Edessa, the principality of Antioch, the kingdom of Jerusalem, and the county of Tripoli. A crusader presence remained in the region in some form until Acre, the last mainland outpost fell in 1291, after which there were no further crusades to recover the Holy Land. The Reconquista the struggle between the Christians and Muslims in the Iberian Peninsula was proclaimed a crusade in 1123 and ended with the fall of the Emirate of Granada in 1492. The Northern Crusades that brought the pagan tribes of Northeastern Europe under Christian control were considered crusades from 1147. In 1199, Pope Innocent III <laughs> Pope Innocent, okay, began the practice of proclaiming political crusades against disobedient Christian rulers. In Languedoc, from 1208, crusading was used against heretics. This continued in Savoy and Bohemia in the 15th century and against Protestants in the 16th century. Crusading was used in response to the rise of the Ottoman Empire in the mid-14th century, only ending with the, war, with the War of the Holy League in 1699. Okay, there's so much. Let's start with terminology. At the time of the First Crusade, journey and peregrinatio, pilgrimage, were used for the campaign. Crusader terminology remained largely indistinguishable from that of Christian pilgrimage during the 12th century. Only at the end of the century was a specific language of crusading adopted in the form, one signed by the cross. <laughs> this led to the French, the way of the cross. By the mid-13th century, the cross became the major descriptor of the Crusades, with Crux Transmarina, the cross overseas. Used for Crusades in the eastern Mediterranean, the cross this side of the sea for those in Europe, the modern English Crusade dates back to the early 1700s. The Arabic word for struggle or contest, particularly one for the pro propagation of Islam, Jihad, was used for religious war of Muslims against unbelievers, and it was believed by some Muslims that the Quran and Hadith made this a duty. Franks and Latins were used by the peoples of the Near East during the Crusades for Western Europeans, distinguishing them from the Byzantine Christians who were known as Greeks. Saracen was used for an Arab Muslim derived from a Greek and Roman name for a nomadic people in the Syrio-Arabian desert. 
Crusader sources use the term Syrians to describe Arabic-speaking Christians who were members of the Greek Orthodox Church. Excuse me. And Jacobites for those who were members of the Syrian Orthodox Church. The Crusader states of Syria and Palestine were known as the Outremer from the French Outremer, the land beyond the sea. Let's get into some background. Mm -mm, not right now, y'all. Not that. Let's start right here. The use of violence for communal purposes was not alien to early Christians. The evolution of a Christian theology of war was inevitable when Roman citizenship became linked to Christianity and citizens were required to fight against the empire's enemies. This was supported by the development of a doctrine of holy war dating from the works of the 4th century theologian Augustine. Augustine maintained that an aggressive war was sinful but acknowledged a just war could be rationalized if it was proclaimed by a legitimate authority such as a king or bishop, was defensive or for the recovery of lands, and without an excessive degree of violence. Violent acts were commonly used for dispute resolution in Western Europe, and the papacy attempted to mitigate it. Historians such as Karl Erdmann thought the peace and truce of God movements restricted conflict between Christians from the 10th century. The influence is apparent in Pope Urban's second speeches. But later historians such as Marcus Bull assert that the effectiveness was limited and it had died out by the time of the Crusades. Pope Alexander II developed a system of recruitment via oaths for military resourcing that Gregory VII extended across Europe. Christian conflict with Muslims on the southern peripheries of Christendom was sponsored by the church in the 11th century, including the siege of Barbastro and fighting in Sicily. In 1074, Gregory VII planned a display of military power to reinforce the principle of papal sovereignty. His vision of a holy war supporting Byzantium against the Seljuks was the first crusade prototype, but lacked support. Theologian Anselm of Lucca took the decisive step towards an authentic crusader ideology, stating that fighting for legitimate purposes could result in the remission of sins. The First Crusade was advocated by Urban II at the Council of Clermont in 1095, promising absolution for the participant's sins. An equivalence was created between crusades for the Holy Land and the Reconquista by Caltex II in 1123. During the period of the Second Crusade, Eugenius, the, Eugenius III was persuaded by Cistercian abbot Bernard of Clairvaux and Germans' conquest of the pagan Slavs was also comparable. In 1146, Papal Bull Divina Despian declared pagan conversion was a goal worthy of crusade. Papal protection, penance, and salvation for those killed was extended to participants in the suppression of heretical sects in 1179 during the Third Council of Lateran. Okay, this is starting to get a little boring. Let's get into some good stuff. Y'all can read the rest of this by yourself. <laughs> Military orders. The Crusaders' propensity to follow the customs of their Western European homelands meant that there were few innovations developed in the Crusader states. Three notable exceptions to this were military orders, warfare, and fortifications. The Knights Hospitaller, formerly the Order of the Knights of the Hospital of St. John of Jerusalem, had a medical function in Jerusalem before the First Crusade. The order later adding a martial element and became a much larger military order. In this way, knighthood entered the previously monastic and ecclesiastical sphere. The Templars, formerly the poor fellow soldiers of Christ in the Temple of Solomon, were founded around the year 1119 by a small band of knights 
who dedicated themselves to protecting pilgrims en route to Jerusalem. King Baldwin II granted the order of Al-Aqsa Mosque in 1129. They were formally recognized by the papacy at 1129 Council of Troyes. Military orders like the Knights Hospitaller and Knights Templar provided Latin Christendom's first professional armies in support of the Kingdom of Jerusalem and the other Crusader states. Okay, let's stop for a second. It says here that King Baldwin II granted the order, the Al-Aqsa Mosque in 1129, they were formally recognized by the papacy at the 1129 Council of Troyes. Let's click on this for a second. Al-Aqsa Mosque, the farthest mosque, located in the old city of Jerusalem, is the third holiest site in Islam. The mosque was built on top of the Temple Mount, known as the Al-Aqsa Compound or Haram Ish Sharif in Islam. Muslims believe that Muhammad was transported from the great mosque of Mecca to Al-Aqsa during the night journey. Islamic tradition holds that Muhammad led prayers towards this site until the 17th month after his migration from Mecca to Medina, when Allah directed him to turn towards the Kaaba in Mecca. Just wanted to mention that the the people who gave um the people who gave according to this the people who gave the knights templar the knights and the knights hospitaller the the legal right to exist was a mosque in the year 1129 at the council of troyes Recognized and confirmed the order of the Knights Templar. So they were founded in 1119. Ten years later in 1129, they were accepted. Right, in 1139, they were recognized by the Pope. So, ten in 10 years, they were. Hmm. Let's see what he was doing in 1129. Stop. <laughs> and notice that his name is Hon right, Honorius. Also wished to promote the ongoing struggle against the Moors in Spain. And to that end, he bestowed the city of Tarragona, which had been recently captured from the Moors, to Robert Diagulo. Robert traveled to Rome to receive the gift from Honorius in 1128. This is before 1129 when the Knights Templar were legally established. Do we have any hidden motives? In 1119, a new religious order had been established by some French noblemen called the Knights Templar. They were to protect Christian pilgrims entering the Holy Land and to defend the conquest of the Crusades. However, by the pontificate of Honorus II, who we were just looking at, they had not yet received any official sanction from the papacy. 
To rectify this situation, some members of the order appeared before the Council of Troyes in 1129, where the council expressed its approval to the order and commissioned Bernard of Clairvaux to drop the order's rules, which now include vows of poverty, chastity, and obedience. The order and the rules were subsequently approved by Honorus. I know it's getting good, y'all. Okay, and then a year after this, y'all, almost a year after of suffering a painful illness, Honorius fell seriously ill in 1130. Cardinal Amaric and the Fragipan <laughs> Frangipani family began planning their next moves, and Honorius was taken to the San Gregorio Magno Alcilio Monastery, which was located in the territory controlled by the Frangipani. Supporters of the Perleoni family family, excuse me, <laughs> already preparing to back Petro Perilloni on a rumor that Honorius had died, stormed the monastery of the dying Honorius, hoping to force the election of Pastro. Only the sight of the still-living Honorius in full pontifical robes forced them to disperse. Nevertheless, Cardinal Emery's plans had not yet reached fruition when Honorius died on the evening of the 13th of February, 1130. The cardinals supporting the Frank Frangipani immediately closed the monastery gates and refused to allow anyone inside the next day, and contrary to the usual customs, Honorius was quickly buried without any pomp or ceremony in the monastery as the hand-picked cardinals got around to electing Gregorio P Pareschi, who took the name Pope Innocent II. At the same time, the excluded cardinals, most of whom were supporters of the Perleone family, elected Petro Perleone, who took the name, and Eclectus II, throwing the church once again into schism. Honorius eventually transformed from the monastery to the Lateran for reburial once Innocent II had been elected. He was buried in the south transept next to the body of Calixtus II. Y'all need, need to look into this. But y'all know that this is just an introduction and that for every introduction video that we've done, we're also going to do pretty much a full lecture series on. And we're, we're, we're already doing that. So coming up here in the next few episodes, we're going to walk everyone through the process on how to go about finding our lecture videos and supporting by watching our lecture videos. With that being said, that ends today's episode. So... Again, peace, blessings, everyone be careful and be safe out there.